High school football is special all across the state of Louisiana, but nothing compares to our area. It's time for this week in River Parish Football. Good evening and welcome to the first annual RiverParishFootball.com postseason awards banquet. I'm pleased to be your host. My name is Eric Ritchie. Uh, we're going to have some fun tonight, hand out some awards, recognition, say some thank yous, and that's really what tonight's banquet uh, is all about. Again, tonight's banquet is being televised on RTC Channel 11. Uh, also, that'll be on Thursday at 7, Friday at 5, and will also be available on our website, riverparishfootball.com, uh, probably starting Friday night. Again, this night is simply to give back, to recognize, to say thank you, and to the many people responsible for making our site grow from what basically was a couple of 40-year-old dudes who didn't know anything about a computer to a well-oiled machine right now that is getting close to 900,000 hits uh, on uh, any given month, which uh, last month we came up just shy of 900,000 hits in a month. And uh, the people to my left are the reason why we're able to send 12 different people out on any given Friday now when uh, many of the coaches know uh, and some of the parents and players know that two years ago it was basically George and I trying to get to as many games as we can. Uh, while we will spend this night again handing out plaques and trophies uh, to the players and coaches that we cover and also recognizing and say thanks to our sponsors that have made this all possible, I'd like to quickly begin by recognizing the staff who basically makes this all go. And it's no coincidence that this guy sitting to my right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the senior writer of RiverParishFootball.com, the backbone, and yes, my right-hand man, give it up for George Becknell, everybody. <laughs> to his right is a classic case of one man's loss is another man's gain. She has brought not only two decades, over two decades of uh, RiverParishFootball.com, uh, RiverParishFootball experience with us, but also really a breath of fresh air. And trust me when I say when 10 guys get in the RiverParishFootball.com home offices on a Friday night, AKA my garage, we need a breath of fresh air. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lori Lyons. Now, before we get to the rest of the head table, I quickly want to acknowledge some of the other members of the staff that are with us tonight. And if you've been checking out the site over the last couple years, in my opinion, it's a no-brainer what the biggest improvement has been, and that's with our still photography. We have some unbelievable guys that capture images of uh, our players and coaches each and every Friday night. So our RiverParishFootball.com uh, tables are back here. First, the grandfather. Go ahead and stand up, Eddie Hitt, who's been with us since day one, who does a fabulous job shooting. Thank you, Eddie. Also at that table back there, uh, her son actually is a River Parish alum, played at Desterhan, and now is one of the best punters in the NFL. She took some fabulous pictures this year. Please welcome Debbie Cyphers. He's going to be working tonight and taking pictures of the players that win awards. So uh, when you do win the award, we'll give you the award and then step off to the right with Jared Monterey. But he had put the video together that we watched earlier today. Please uh, say hi to Jared Monterey. And check out their site, their website as well. I know we've had a couple of requests for some pictures and we'll do the best we can. But again, Jared's uh, done a great job with this as well. All right, now to the rest of the head table. Uh, to my far right, a former equipment manager and aspiring athletic trainer from St. Charles Catholic, who's now a freshman at Nichols State. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Forsythe. And we will explain why Nick is up here later tonight. And now to my left, and many of these faces should look very familiar because if you get on the home page of RiverParishFootball.com, and that's where those 900,000 hits a month come, you're going to see many of these people that are up here with us. Uh, to my immediate left, I hope you've been able to see that commercial that uh, he's got the uh, playoff fever and his mechanics drive through that, that poster. Please welcome Ricky Brock, who's been with us from Brock's Automotive, really from day one of this website. Also on the, to his left, is from St. James Parish Hospital and the Lutcher Family Clinic. She has been with us as well. They, they sponsor the stats page as well. One of our corporate sponsors, Cassie St. Pierre. And as well, on the far left, um, 
She is a councilwoman here in St. Charles Parish, but again, she is on our website as a very successful realtor in, uh, for Ladder and Bloom. Please say hello to Wendy Benedetto. All right, let's get to the fun stuff. Let's hand out some awards. Um, each and every week we did the Fatties Player of the Week, and you guys know when I would show up there and uh, we kind of you know, worked it out as the, the season went on how we would do it, and we never really wanted to name it the riverparishfootball.com, blah, blah. I wanted it to be, and so did Sean DeLanvalil, who's not here tonight, he wanted it to be the Fatties Player of the Week because 20 years from now, I sure hope we can be, be having a banquet like this and people will be like, yeah, I was a Fatties Player of the Week, I was a Fatties Player of the Week, and of course they've got one in Garyville and they've got one uh, in Laplace, as well. So uh, on the plaques you'll see it says the Fatties Player of the Week and that's certainly how we refer to it. So we're gonna, what we're going to do is go through each week and we're going to show a little video of uh, who the winning guy was. Uh, we did, you know what, this guy right here, I forgot to acknowledge him. I would not be surprised if he's running Monday Night Football by the time he's 30. He's the guy that set up all this equipment. He's in high school. Derek Felton. Say hello to Derek Felton. <laughs> It was a subtle reminder, but there's this key that I, I needed to say hi to him. All right. Derek, are we ready to do the videos? Okay. <laughs> if you've ever seen the Satellite Center, it is amazing what those kids can do. And obviously the technology that George and I lack, the youngsters have picked up. So here we go. We're going to get right to it. Hurricane Isaac obviously wiped out week one from our schedule. So we begin with week two. Here now is the week two winner of the Fatties Player of the Week. Kylan Favorite and West St. John may have been the last River Parish football team to kick off the 2012 season, but it sure was worth the wait. The senior running back scored the first of his four touchdowns in the first quarter Monday against South Plaquemines, when he busted a 58-yard run on a key third and long situation. After three rushing touchdowns, Favorite showed the versatility, hauling in a touchdown reception, catching the pass from Austin Howard, covering 46 yards. In all, 200 yards rushing on 18 carries and three touchdowns to go along with 56 yards receiving and a touchdown reception. Kylan Favorite, our Fatties Player of the Week. <laughs> it feels great. I mean, to be the first. We're probably the play, play, the, play of the week. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Kylan Favorite, our Fatties Player of the Week. Thanks to Fatties. <laughs> Kylan, come on up here. You started us off. You did a great job. <laughs> Congratulations. Nice job. Nice job. Ready to start us off? I'm gonna go right over there and get a picture over there. Thank you very much, and we, and we are underway. That was week two. Those guys actually played on a Monday night. They played South Plaquemin, who was really wanting to play close to home. They couldn't play at South Plaquemin. They played at Bell Chase on a Monday night. It was an amazing game. So week three, this year, you don't see me on the sidelines with the camera because I'm working for uh, Cox 4 um, doing the play-by-play -play for the New Orleans games. And in week three, I had the opportunity to, when we had some great games all year, but in week three, we saw one of the best comebacks of the year, and from that comeback came our week three winner. Let's check it out. Lutcher's Rustin Mathern showed so much grit Friday at Hanville, John Wayne would be proud. On the Bulldogs' very first play from scrimmage, Mathern got injured. I mean, my mind was spinning. I mean, I didn't know what to do. I was worried about my team, and uh, I was really very worried about my knee as well. And uh, I was just hoping it wasn't an ACL tear or anything to that extreme. I knew if, if, if it was humanly possible to come back, that he would. After missing only one offensive series, Mathern was quickly back to his old tricks. His spectacular 52-yard touchdown run started Lutcher's fireworks in the fourth quarter as the Bulldogs scored 19 points in the final frame. Mathern finished with 163 yards rushing with two touchdowns and 191 yards passing and two more TDs. The last one going to Spencer Roussel with under a minute to play, which proved to be the game winner. Congratulations, Lutcher quarterback Rustin Mathern, our Fatties Player of the Week. Rustin Mathern, senior quarterback from Lutcher.
Now, next year, what we're going to do is we're going to take a lot more input from the coaches, assistant coaches. Um, our Facebook page is wide open as well to take input. But I didn't want this every week to be a Fatty's Offensive Player of the Week. Really wanted the defensive guys to get some love. And we'll give out our Defensive Player of the Year in just a bit. But we got so many great defensive players as well. But on week five, I guess it was week four, week four. I'm getting ahead of myself because we lost week one. Week four, we finally got that defensive player of the week. I'm Rajon Marbley, outside linebacker from Destrant High School, and I'm Fatty's player of the week. Marbley picked a great time for the best game of his prep career. The Wildcats junior outside linebacker was all over the field in the Wildcats 22-12 upset win over state-ranked West Jeff. We had uh, a lot to prove, you know, uh, last year we went uh, two and eight, so we uh, were kind of the underdogs of the situation. But uh, Coach told us that uh, if we really buy into the program and uh, everything we have, that uh, we ought to do our assignments and everybody do their goal and we'll be successful. And that's what we just went out and executed and got everything done. When the dust had settled, four sacks for Marbley, including the game clincher late in the fourth quarter. If uh, we rattle his cage, you know, get under him, get him bothered, we could uh, possibly get him a little worried and uh, cause some havoc, and uh, that's what we went out and did. I just do what I'm coached. Uh, my coaches are, we are pretty excellent coaches, and uh, I just, my coaches lead me pretty well. I just uh, get after it, uh, play fast, physical, and hard, and just go for the ball. Destrahan's Rajon Marbley, the fattest player of the week. So glad the defensive guys got recognized, and uh, certainly Rajon, you saw the highlights there. West Saint, uh, West Jeff, they're still wondering what happened. Congratulations. There you go, Rajon Marbley. You know, all of us in this room were in some way affected, obviously, by Hurricane Isaac, and uh, obviously the our, our friends at, at East Saint John, our friends at Saint Charles and Riverside took took the brunt of it, and. Um, you know, there was flooding in not only coaches' homes, players' homes, but certainly East St. John with what they had to go through with, with water in their school, with water in their field house, and uh, just basically having to get equipment. And it was just a, a, amazing what they had to deal with. Um, week five, they put it all together on the football field and got a win. And our Fatties Player of the Week that week came from their victory. Leonard Davis has been a candidate for the Fatties Player of the Week every week this season. And after his performance Thursday in Baton Rouge, the East St. John senior quarterback is the week five winner. The very first play from scrimmage, indicative of what kind of a night it was about to be for Davis. This one didn't go for a touchdown, but it set up his own rushing touchdown. Davis added three passing touchdowns to help the Wildcats to a resounding 41-20 win over Capitol. It feels great to get our first win because we worked all year and all summer. And uh, to get this win is a relief. The win was the first this season for East St. John, whose school was flooded in the aftermath of Hurricane Isaac. Davis was one of the first Wildcats back to practice in the days following the storm. East St. John is still here. We're not playing, we're not soft, we're still going to hit you. We're still the same East St. John we was before. As for having a great individual performance and East St. John getting a win, a nice game is all thanks to my team, my coaches. They stand behind me 100 percent. And that's just that helped me uh, with my confidence in the pocket. East St. John quarterback Leonard Davis, our fattest player of the week. Congratulations, Leonard. Leonard Davis, everyone. At MyHealthInsuranceLady.com, we offer online quotes for Blue Cross, Humana, and Coventry, just to name a few. That's My Health Insurance Lady. We offer you expert advice on choosing a plan that's right for you and your family. That's My Health Insurance Lady. So go to MyHealthInsuranceLady.com for your health insurance needs. That's My Health Insurance Lady. MyHealthInsuranceLady.com. When Bill Stubbs returned to coaching and he came back this year at Riverside, he allowed offensive coordinator Damian Melanson to basically open up the playbook. The result, well, some prolific numbers. Certainly, if you look at the, the stats in this year, each week it was almost eye-popping, and it really all started with week six. My name is John Quell Sanders. 
I'm a running back at Riverside Academy, and I am fattest player of the week. The hard-nosed Rebel senior running back personified Riverside's season-long determination Friday against Cohen, scoring four touchdowns and rushing for over 100 yards, helping Riverside to win number one in the Bill Stubbs era. I stand up to be a leader for my team and, you know, wanted to play hard and show them that we, you know, what Rebel football is really about. I never give up on a play. I go 100 every time. No, no matter if we lose or win, and I still push to, I can't no more. Well, you know, he practices like he plays. That's the beauty of him, and he kind of sets the example out here. So uh, we expect, as we get deeper and deeper, that he's going to have bigger and bigger things. I mean, there, there's going to be good things. He's, he's a tough one to bring down. You get him in the open field. Now I feel like, you know, we started, we started bad, but now we were 0-0. Zero and zero. Now we won in 0, and we're going to go 5-0. and oh. Riverside senior running back Jock Will Sanders, the fattest player of the week. You know, in the perfect world, we like to switch this award around. You know, you want to give it to, you know, every team you want to have represented. You want to, like we said before, you want to give it to a defensive guy. You want to switch positions. You want to switch players. Well, in week seven, we really had a dilemma. You know, we had a number of worthy candidates. Dester Hands, Michael Smith, the wide receiver, had a, had a huge week. Deuce Wallace had four touchdown passes for Riverside. Sam McMahon, monster game and a shutout win over Port Allen for St. Charles. Daquan Sandoff had his best game for St. James, and they, uh, he had over 100 yards rushing and passing. And we had to make a decision because it's the fattiest player of the week. And just because you've won the award one time, we felt between George and Lori and myself, it should not exclude you from winning again. So in week seven, we had our first two-time winner of the Fatties Player of the Week. I'm Rustin Mathern, number 16 for Lutcher High School, and I'm Fatties Player of the Week. Mathern continued to put up tremendous numbers in helping Lutcher to a 25-0 key shutout win in district play over St. Michael. 20 of 23 passing, 176 yards and a touchdown in the air. Also, 156 yards rushing and two touchdowns on the ground. Rustin Mathern, our first two-time winner of the Fatties Player of the Week. Big district game, a lot of fans in the stadium. Both, both sides of the stadiums were filled up. And, um, you know, we got the ball on. We had to drive 80 yards about three times in a row. And our offense just put it together, you know. Our line did their job. I did my job, and receivers caught all the passes I threw to them, and we actually ran the ball very well last week. I have to say we had been having a great season, but um, we still got work to do. We got uh, players to get back, and we got we got to keep working to our goals. You know, we want to end up in the dome like every other team. As Rustin goes, we go. But I don't think you realize the type of athlete Rustin is. You know, he he's a tremendous competitor, and you you can certainly see that in the weight room and all the uh, uh, things that he does. But his his disposition in life, you know, uh, kind of carefree and stuff. You, you, you wouldn't think that he's the competitor that he is, but uh, first thing I noticed on the football field is his speed. Tremendous arm, but because of his legs, he, he keeps us in every football game. Congratulations to Lutcher senior quarterback, Rustin Mathern, our first two-time winner of the Fatties Player of the Week. In week eight, what was going on at Hanville could no longer be ignored. There was a linebacker who was playing running back, and the linebacker had made some great tackles in the years before, but suddenly, every time this guy, the more he ran the ball, the more Hanville won. Hi, I'm Sergio Medina from Hanville High School, and I play running back, and I'm the fattest player of the week. Sergio Medina moved from linebacker to tailback just three weeks ago against Bonneville. All he's done in the process is lead the Tigers to three consecutive district wins. Well, it's been a blast so far uh, just to make the transition back. Uh, freshman year, it was fun uh, just to go all out and just running. Pound for pound, he's the strongest kid on the team, maybe the best athlete, but he's got some good speed. You know, he's hard to bring down. The first guy, I don't get him. So, uh, you know, he's been, I mean, Moving him to offense, you know, might have been the best defensive move we ever made because that keeps our defense off the field. To me, it feels like they're really counting on me and stuff, and it's just, 
and it's just good to be playing with a good group of O-linemen that are just uh, setting up all the uh, runs and gaps are just wide open for me. It's just, it's just real good to have a, a team like this. Congratulations to Hanville Sergio Medina, the River Parish Fatties Player of the Week. All right, speaking of dilemmas, we had another one in week nine. We had our first split vote between the Board of Governors with RiverParishFootball.com. We quickly went outside of the, the group and started soliciting, in, you know, what would you guys do? Here are the numbers. We have one guy that did this, one guy that did that. One guy is a freshman. Should we, are we, should we even give it to a freshman? Well, I think Johnny Football told us that it's okay, it's cool to give hardware to a freshman, isn't it? So in week nine, well, we had, a, we had a, a first one more time. I'm Deuce Wallace, freshman quarterback of Riverside Academy, and I am the Fatties Player of the Week. I'm Von Julian, Riverside Academy sophomore wide receiver, and I'm the Fatties Player of the Week. Yes, our first co-winners of the Fatties Player of the Week. And with 352 yards passing and four touchdowns from Wallace and 13 receptions, 236 yards and three touchdowns for Julian, how can you pick just one? Yeah, I, I'd agree with you. you know, the, these two guys have been getting better all year long. You know, they're not the only ones, but uh, I'm going to tell you, they, they, they both had a whale of a night the other night. We kind of started off slow, the game slow, but um, picked up everything after the second half, had a good talk in the locker room, know what we had to do. Um, I trusted everybody out there on the field, my line, receivers, running back, everybody. And uh, we just went out there and executed and turned out at, at a big win. Well, you know, it was kind of tough because they, were, they had a really good defense and their offense. It kept scoring, but um, we just didn't give up. And what about the game winner? A 23-yard strike with just nine seconds left to give Riverside a 48-44 win over Newman and keep their playoff hopes alive. We had Herb and Jonquil, like all the good players that they were focused on, to the left side, and I was backside by myself. And coach called a play, and Deuce made it happen with the good pass. Well, it was definitely nerve-wracking, but I, I trusted Vaughn. They had man-on-man -man coverage with nobody behind um, that cornerback, and I trusted that he would go win that, um, that battle. I just threw in the end zone and let him go get it, and he did his thing. Congratulations to Vaughn Julian and Deuce Wallace our Fatties Co-Players of the Week. Another first. <laughs> Again, I was fortunate enough to do play-by-play -play of uh, the game that our next winner came from. And, you know, when you're talking about one of the best rivalries in the state, this was the highest scoring one ever in the Desterhan Hanville series. Again, a, a comeback was involved. Uh, again, it involved Hanville, but this time they were on the other side. Let's cue up our second two time winner. Hi, I'm Sergio Medina from Hanville High School, and I play running back, and I'm the fattest player of the week. The numbers don't lie. 39 carries, 230 yards, and four touchdowns. All career highs for the senior who was playing linebacker at midseason before the position change. The last of his touchdowns came on a fourth down play in overtime. Molosson to Medina, and Medina is into the end zone. Hanville wins it. Closes out the season with five consecutive victories after starting the year with four losses. Hanville, the Tigers are your outright District 8-5A champs. A fourth touchdown run from Sergio Medina seals the deal in overtime. Well, it's been a blast so far uh, just to make the transition back. Uh, freshman year was fun uh, just to go all out and just running. You know, he's a great athlete. He's a multi-sport athlete, so that's no... You know, it was no problem for him moving over to offense. He, he didn't mind. He's going to do whatever he had to do to help the team. Congratulations to Sergio Medina, a two-time winner of the Fatties Player of the Week. Sergio Medina. You know, in a season where Hanville began the year 0-4, Riverside 0-4, East St. John 0-3, St. Charles 0-2, and, and I don't know if that's ever happened, Resiliency was certainly a part of the fabric this season in River Parish football. And that was certainly on display in our 
week 11 winner in our first week of the playoffs. I'm Austin Weber, quarterback and running back from St. Charles Catholic, and I'm the Fatties Player of the Week. Austin Weber loves to play running back, but this year it's been quarterback where the comments have needed him most. He was never more needed than Friday night's playoff win against Westlake. Trailing 26 to seven, Weber sparked the comeback. He threw for two touchdowns, ran for another one. In all, he led St. Charles with 72 yards rushing and passing was nine of 13 for 108 yards. I mean, we were worried a little bit, but we knew if we started playing as a team, we could come back. I mean, it was great. Uh, whenever you come back from a deficit like that, it, it means a lot. So. It was a good feeling. He's just a just an excellent athlete, and and you look at him, and say, my God, he's not he's not really really big. He's physically he doesn't look like an imposing player, but he he gets the job done, and he's done a nice job for us as far as the quarterback is concerned. I mean, I'd rather play running back, but if coach needs me to play quarterback, I'm gonna play quarterback. I mean, it's been fun because if nobody's open, I can run the ball. So that's uh, that's an advantage I have that a lot of other quarterbacks don't. Congratulations to St. Charles Catholic sophomore Austin Weber, our Fatties Player of the Week. I don't know if you might have noticed that there's a few Riverside tables tonight. And you know what, there's a good reason. Rebel players were highly decorated this year, and there's a good reason why. The next winner actually called his shot. We taped this week in River Parish football. Um, gosh, it was uh, week four, week five, and this next winner came up to me and said, I will win the Fatties Player of the Week this year. He was right. My name is Herbert McGee. I play wide receiver. I go to Riverside Academy, and I'm the Fatty Player of the Week. Herb McGee is the leading receiver in all of River Parish football, and he's just a freshman. He had 153 yards receiving and nine receptions on Friday to go along with two touchdowns, including the game winner with 20 seconds left, giving Riverside a 28-22 second round playoff win. John Coyle and Vine they did a great job of blocking, and I made a couple players miss and got in the end zone. Well, I just knew I, I couldn't drop it, and I had to get in the end zone. It was great. I mean, to know that I scored and um, came back from behind, it was a great feeling. Coach Timmy, the head of our athletics, told me that in the first half, I had made a fumble on kickoff, and he told me to keep my head up. And he told me, don't get down. My teammates, they look up to me. And I just did what he said, and it all worked out. Herb McGee, the fourth Riverside Rebel to win the Fatties Player of the Week. You know, we could have stopped the Fatties Player of the Week at the end of the regular season, and by the time we send the invoice to Fatties, he probably wished we would have, but think of all of the kids that we got to recognize once the regular season was over. I mean, just a few players that we've already brought up here, you know, those are guys that were finalists before, and Austin and Herb. So we kept it going through the playoffs. If there's a River Parish team alive, we're going to give out a Fatty's Player of the Week. And, um, and we're, we're glad we did. And our, it's only fitting that our final Fatty's Player of the Week came from the last team standing in River Parish football. I'm Austin Howell, West St. John, high school quarterback, and I'm Fatty's Player of the Week. The West St. John junior quarterback picked a tremendous time to have a stellar performance. 15 of 21, 231 yards and two touchdowns in the air. He also rushed for two touchdowns, leading West St. John to a quarterfinal victory over Vermilion Catholic. If it's a dare, then I'm going to take it. Because uh, I think our running game is efficient, because it was, was to stop the run first. But then when I got my passing game going, I was on fire, couldn't stop it. Before the game, I, I pray to God every, every day before the game. I know he got my back. So I just go out with the intention of doing what I got to do, playing with my eyes, seeing what I see, and making plays. Well, Howard is a catalyst. You know, I think that when you have a quarterback to do what we do, you have to be able to give him the keys to the Cadillac, let him drive it. Congratulations to West St. John quarterback Austin Howard, our Fatties Player of the Week. Ah It's
It's a whole lot better for plan service than it is for demand service. That's why at Cajun Comfort Electrical Air Conditioning and Heating, we've developed a unique umbrella for our customers known simply as Comfort Club. For AC units, it's the ESA. Energy Savings Agreement. You get two cleanings a year. Also with that, you get a 15% discount on any repairs you may need, and you get priority service, which to me is the most important thing. Comfort Club. Which also includes EPP. Electrical protection plan. We go through your panel and check all your breakers, check everything, make sure everything looks good. That way you don't have to worry about any kind of electrical fire in your home. Comfort Club. And for your generators. GMP. Generator maintenance program. We go through, we change the oil, we change filters. When the storm comes, your generator's up and ready to kick on for you. We're what satisfaction is supposed to feel like, and we guarantee that satisfaction 100%. Now's the time to call Cajun Comfort Electrical Air Conditioning and Heating, and just ask for... Comfort Club! Before we segue from our Players of the Week to our Players of the Year, I'll quit hogging the mic and bring up one of our cohorts from riverparishfootball.com. Please once again welcome George Becknell, our senior writer. Well, you know, Eric mentioned about how he loses things. Well, he also, he also forgets things. And about 4 o'clock this afternoon, he gives me a call, and he says, uh, you know, George, I want you to get up and, uh, you know, say a few words. So you saw Eric had a stack of papers. The writer of River Parish football has none. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to have to go uh, just off the cuff and uh, ask for your indulgence. But uh, first off, you know, we've been honoring a lot of people, but I think also, too, we need to take a moment and uh, we need to honor Eric and thank him for putting this on today because he did a wonderful job with this. You know, as a writer, you're always looking for uh, uh, things that you uh, find that, that give you something unique to each uh, story or whatever you're working on. And, and River Parish football has given us a lot of that this year. You know, we've had um, the flood at the beginning of the year that causes the first uh, week of the season, which gave us a chance to reflect on, uh, you know, there's things more important than football. And before that, you know, we had the police officers who were slain. So uh, River Parish football helped to show, uh, you know, how important football is to communities and uh, its place, you know, in society. And uh, so I want to thank all of the, the schools for all of their uh, various storylines. We had, you know, a, a team that was, had the mantle of being defending state champ. We had another team that had gotten to the finals the year before and was hungry to get back. Uh, we had some coaching changes. We've had some kids who showed uh, tremendous uh, resiliency, even though you know the the wins might not have been there. So uh, there was a lot to cover, and I think also um, I think all of you who are parents and fans of these young men uh, have a lot to be proud of. Uh, they represent their school and their area very well. Uh, when you go and you talk to these players, uh, they will give you uh, a firm handshake, and they will tell you yes, sir, and no, sir, and. Uh, you know, I think that reflects very well on, on everyone. Uh, also, too, we had uh, an opportunity to go up to uh, Haynesville to see uh, West St. John uh, play for the, uh, in the state semifinals. And uh, believe me, West St. John, just like all the other River Parish schools, are, are a known quantity. We had got up there and uh, had a chance to get a quick bite to eat before going to the stadium. So it uh, wasn't like we had anything that showed we were from River Parish area or anything. And you hear people talking about, you're going to the game tonight? You're going to the game tonight? Yeah, we, you know, we're playing that team again. We said West St. John. You know, they, uh, you know, I don't know if we can beat them. They're a good football team. You know, there's the same team that beat us last year. So, uh, you know, they're well known. All the youth schools are well known. But I think also, too, uh, as we talked about things with perspective, uh, one thing that may not be known, I think most of you here probably do know, but uh, maybe the best kept secret around here is that West St. John, the school, was only one point away from being an A school this year. So uh, a lot of, to be proud of, not only with, you know, athletically, but also um, academically. And, uh, you know, it's been a, a very uh, enjoy joyful um, season this year. Uh, just yesterday, I had a chance to go over to Hornville and uh, watch the uh, River All-Stars practice for the uh, River Bayou uh, showdown. And I was in the hallway of the building and heard River Parish football. So I'm like, 
you know, wow, I guess people, you know, are hearing about us, you know. And then I heard somebody else say, said, uh, Eric Ritchie? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, and the guy said, no, the other dude from River Parish football. So, <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm the other dude from uh, River Parish football. <laughs> but uh, I've heard worse. Uh, probably, I'm sure it was uh, worse coming from some of these coaches after uh, I left their offices each week uh, interviewing them. So, uh, again, just want to thank everybody. Uh, for coming out here today and making this a, a very uh, nice occasion. Thank you. And for those of you who don't know, and the coaches certainly do, George literally does a story on all eight schools and gets in touch with all eight coaches every week. So please, one more round of applause for the backbone of our website. And we do take a big step each and every year. And George started us this with myself two years ago. We're like, man, we should give out postseason awards. 2010, eh, it's kind of, you know, our site was still when you hit the video, it wouldn't play. So we didn't give out an, a formal one, but we would have given it to probably Dakiel Williams, would have been our offensive player of the year. And uh, Jarvis Landry probably would have been actually our defensive player of the year that first year. That's what we talked about. We never announced it. Last year, we finally did. We at least announced it. We didn't have a big banquet. We didn't give out trophies, but uh, one of the guys that won last year is with us today, and I want to recognize him if he would stand up right now. Our 2011 Coach of the Year not only uh, surpassed his 200th career win during which he had two different stints at college, he possibly could have doubled that, but he also, after he what he said was enough silver, he finally brought home the gold. Please acknowledge our 2011 Coach of the Year, Frank Monica. Our Defensive Player of the Year, uh, Taylor Cochran, who uh, tore his ACL this year. I'm sure he'd be with us this evening as well. Our Offensive Player of the Year was Darian Monroe from East St. John, who was on the Conference USA. All freshman team is now getting the job done for another River Parish guy, Curtis Johnson, as a freshman safety for the Green Wave. And then we did our Athlete of the Year, uh, which again was uh, recognizing players that excelled at more than one position. And last year it was certainly Jeffrey Hall, what he did on both sides of the ball, and uh, came back in the playoffs and played running back, and he was a defensive back in West St. John's, uh, Jarius Mole, for what he did uh, as well as a return guy, defense. Every time we were there, he was making a big play. But that was then, and this is now. Petra, the River Region's newest dining experience, located in the heart of Laplace, offers full service dining, an elegant lounge, and abundant meeting and special event space. Featuring an exotic menu filled with local flavors, Petra offers an express lunch served up in 30 minutes or less and a variety of daily specials. The lounge features six TVs, a full service menu and daily happy hour specials. Perfect for a business meeting or to spend a nice evening with friends. Our lounge offers the elegance you expect and the service you deserve. Celebrate your special moments at Petra Restaurant and Lounge, the River Region's newest dining experience. It's now time to really get into our 2012 RiverParishFootball.com Players of the Year. We're going to have our main sponsors give out these awards tonight. And uh, first up, we're going to bring up Ricky Brock of Brock's Automotive to help present the award. And first, when Ricky gets up here, I want Ricky to talk about why being a part of River Parish football is so important to you guys. And please welcome Ricky Brock, who's been with us since day one. Well, I love, I love Friday night football. Um, you know, been following. I played for Frankie actually 25 something years ago. So, you know, that's kind of a little enjoyment to watch. I'll probably continue doing it till I can't drive my RV no more to the games. Um, you know, River Parish football, dot com it's it's for our kids you know it's the future it's the future of the river parish and i like giving back you know it's just one of those things and now here are the finalists uh for the river parish football dot com offensive player of the year the finalist for the river parish football dot com offensive player of the year west st john running back kylam favorite the senior led river parish football in rushing with 1315 yards and in rushing touchdowns with 19. He averaged over eight yards a carry and was second in scoring with 21 touchdowns and four extra points. 
West St. John running back Jeremy Jackson. The junior led River Parish football with a 9.3 yards per carry average. He was second in River Parish football in rushing with 1,135 yards and third in scoring with 19 total touchdowns. Lutcher quarterback Rustin Mathern. The senior completed a River Parish high 67% of his passes, throwing for just under 2,000 yards in 10 games. Mathern threw 21 touchdown passes and just four interceptions. He also finished eighth in rushing with 666 yards. With 14 touchdowns on the ground, he was fifth in scoring. Hondville running back Sergio Medina. The senior rushed for 1,035 yards, but did so in only seven games. His 148 yards a game average was number one in River Parish football. Despite playing only seven games on offense, he wound up with 15 touchdowns and was fourth in scoring. Riverside running back John Quill Sanders. The senior was the top scorer in River Parish football with 25 touchdowns and was the only River Parish player to rank in the top four in both rushing and receiving yards. He finished fourth in rushing with 950 yards, averaging 6.6 .6 yards a carry, and third in receiving with 669 yards. Riverside quarterback Deuce Wallace. The freshman led River Parish football with 2,746 yards passing and 31 touchdown passes. He also completed 61% of his attempts. And the winner is... <clears throat> I feel like the Emmy Awards. <laughs> Rustin Mathern. Now to hand out our RiverParishFootball.com Defensive Player of the Year from St. James Parish Hospital and the Letcher Family Clinic. Please welcome Cassie St. Pierre, who also talks about being a part of River Parish Football. Cassie? Thanks to the support of our wonderful community, in just four short years, St. James Parish Hospital has built a new state-of-the-art facility, acquired millions of dollars worth of technology, and most recently opened the doors to a progressive care unit and a beautiful medical plaza, which has already attracted several specialists to our area. We never lose sight of the fact that our continued growth is a di direct connection to community needs and community support, so we are grateful for the opportunity to give back to the community that has contributed so much to our organization's success. And now the finalists for the RiverParishFootball.com Defensive Player of the Year. The finalist for the RiverParishFootball.com Defensive Player of the Year, St. Charles linebacker Luke Jackson. The senior finished the season with team highs in sacks with 11 and a half and tackles for loss with 17, while finishing second in total tackles for a Comets defense who registered four shutouts during the season, including three in a row. St. James linebacker Seth Keller. The senior was the unquestionable leader for a Wildcats team who battled through a second consecutive winless season and was flat out a tackling machine. For schools that sent their statistics to maxpreps.com, Keller led the state with an average of 13.7 tackles a game. Destrahan linebacker Ray Jean Marbley. The junior moved from outside to inside linebacker and was the only defensive player to be named the Fatties Player of the Week. Marbley finished the season with seven sacks and 10 tackles for loss, two fumble recoveries, and an interception. St. Charles safety Sam McMahon. The dynamic senior registered an impressive six and a half sacks and nine and a half tackles for loss from the secondary while also recording a pair of interceptions and three fumble recoveries. An emotional spark plug for St. Charles, McMahon always seemed to be around the ball and was also a key contributor on special teams coverage units. 
Hanville defensive end Jovan Murray. The junior was a force all season for the Tigers and is the lone true defensive lineman named as a finalist. Murray finished the season with nine sacks and 16 tackles for loss, both team highs for the Tigers. Letcher linebacker Blake Roussel. The junior was the defensive leader on a team who, like St. Charles, recorded three consecutive shutouts and finished with four on the season. On the list of teams participating in the MaxPreps.com stats page, Roussel finished tied for fifth in the state, averaging 11 and a half tackles a game. In addition to his 115 total tackles, Roussel also had two sacks, an interception, and a fumble recovery. West St. John linebacker Dontre Turner. The Rams senior is one of three finalists to register triple digits in tackles, finishing with 101. He caused havoc in opposing backfields all season, leading all defenders in River Parish football with 18 tackles for loss. Turner also registered five sacks for the Rams, who were the only team from the River Parishes to advance to the state semifinals. And the winner is Luke Jackson from St. Charles Catholic. Catch all the fun of New Orleans at the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. We're kicking off the bowl weekend at Champion Square December 21st with a free concert with Bad Company with former lead singer Brian Howe, followed by the legendary Beach Boys. Then we'll rock the Mercedes-Benz Superdome on Saturday, December 22nd, as Louisiana's Ragin' Cajuns take on the East Carolina Pirates. Now this is football, y'all. For tickets, visit the Dome box office or go to Ticketmaster.com. Our Athlete of the Year goes to the player who excelled at more than one position, so it's only fitting that our presenter does the same. Not only is she a St. Charles Parish Councilwoman, but also a very successful real estate agent for Ladder and Bloom. And who says real estate is down? She is having a much better season than the New Orleans Saints. Wendy Benedetto. But I could only get paid like Drew Brees. <laughs> okay, well, unlike you, I just had a couple of minutes to figure out mine when I got here. So, <laughs> but it's not very hard. Um, first, I'm honored to be here to present such a award. Um, as a district council member, um, I give back to my community, and it's part of what I want to do. I chose to do, and the people elected me to do. As an agent listing and selling homes, 95% of my sales are here in the River Parishes. I don't go into Jefferson Parish in New Orleans. I keep it here. And I use local businesses for inspections, termites, and anything else that needs to be done, title companies. So when I heard um, Eric was looking for sponsors, it was a no-brainer. I've got three kids that went to um, the schools out here in St. Charles Parish. So giving back to these kids meant everything in the world. And as long as I can afford to do it, it'll be there forever. So tonight, um, and now here for, I'm sorry, the uh, finalists for the RiverParishFootball.com Athlete of the Year. The six finalists for the RiverParishFootball.com Athlete of the Year awarded to a player who excelled at more than one position, East St. John's Leonard Davis. To put the seniors all around season in perspective, Consider that he finished with more total yards than Darian Monroe had last season as the quarterback at East St. John. And Debo was named the 2011 RiverParishFootball.com Offensive Player of the Year. Davis threw for 14 touchdowns and rushed for eight more. He also played some defensive back and was the Wildcats' long snapper, making several tackles on special teams. West St. John's Jeremy Jackson. The junior was a dynamic playmaker for the Rams, not only in the backfield, but also as a receiver and kickoff returner. 
Jackson's 9.3 yards per carry average was tops among all players in the River Parishes. He also was West St. John's leading receiver heading into district play and also returned a pair of kickoffs for touchdowns. Hanville's Sergio Medina. The senior had been one of Hanville's top linebackers for the past two seasons, but a depleted Tigers backfield helped spur the change to running back where Medina had played as a freshman. The move paid major dividends right away. Medina rushed for 160 yards and led the Tigers to their first win of the season after four straight losses. From there, he averaged a River Parish football best 148 rushing yards a game the rest of the season, leading Hodville to six straight wins, a district championship, and playoff win along the way. Lutcher Spencer Roussel, who was not only an efficient receiver for the Bulldogs, but also handled kicking duties and was an occasional punter. The senior caught 21 passes for an impressive 22.8 yards per catch average. But even more impressive was the fact that 43% of his catches went for touchdowns. He also kicked 34 extra points for the Dogs and finished sixth in River Parish scoring. Riverside's Jonquil Sanders. On a Rebels team full of underclassmen at skilled position, Sanders was more than just a senior leader. The dynamic dual threat was not only fourth in the River Parishes with 950 rushing yards, but he also lined up as a receiver for the Rebels and finished third in River Parish football in receiving yards with 669 throw in four touchdowns as a returner, and Sanders led River Parish football with 25 touchdowns. Austin Weber, St. Charles Catholic. Coming off a freshman season that saw him step into the starting running back position to the tune of 516 yards when both starters went down at the end of the season, he was poised to assume duties as a sophomore at running back. But as he continued to develop as a quarterback, it turned out that's where the Comets needed him most. Splitting time at both QB and running back, Weber led St. Charles to an eight-game win streak. He accounted for 20 touchdowns, a team-high 14 rushing, and six passing. Well, if it was my choice, they all would get him. Okay, the winner is... Hornville High, Sergio Medina. Thank you. When I moved back to this area in 2007, actually right up the road on Villery Drive, um, I also always would pay particular attention to the River Parish section of the Times-Picayune. So I learned a lot of when I came back what was happening uh, from our next presenter. And then when I was, uh, I was working at Fox 8, I was made a member of the uh, Sugar Bowl, All-State Sugar Bowl Media Selection Committee, and I got to meet her, and I'm like, is that, is that Lori Lyons? I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of your work. Well, six years later, now that she's working for RiverParishFootball.com, I'm even more of a fan. Lori, come on up here and give out the Coach of the Year. You know the old saying, one man's refuse is another man's reward, or another man's, one man's trash is another man's treasure, however you want to look at it. Um, it's been an adventurous year. Uh, as many of you know, for 20, 26 years, I was a member of the Times Speaking and Sports staff. And in May of last year, I was informed that as of October 1st, I would no longer be a member of the Times Speaking and staff. And I was one of the 200 who was let go when the paper went to three days a week and focused its attention on digital. So the woman with four Facebook pages, three Twitter accounts, two blogs, uh, and manages and maintains four websites was not, main, not kept by the digital media company, and I was cut loose. But I had met Eric, and Eric uh, and I kind of went to him and said, can you use me? And he said, sure. And um, he put me back doing what I love to do. For the last two years, I had been covering crime, murders, <laughs> other crimes. Um, 
Yes, I covered the shooting of the deputies in St. John, which was horrible because one of them was my best friend's husband. And uh, it was, it, it was, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be a sports chick again. And so now we got the two dudes and the sports, the riverparishes.com sports chick. So, um, and I literally, the first night that they sent me to St. James High School, I sat in the press box and one of the cute Destrahan coaches passed me by and said, welcome back, and I cried. Um, I might cry again. Uh, I love what I do, I love what I did, and I'm so, so, so happy to be doing it again. And I'm, every time I touched, a, touched foot on a field, sat in a press box, got bit by a mosquito, um, belched up jambalaya, uh, I got stepped on by a cleat, I was in heaven. And this year has been no exception, it's been wonderful. I have loved seeing all of you again, my old friends. Uh, loved being in the Superdome last weekend for the first time in three years. Did the new press box, my ears popped. Um, and I have loved watching these kids again. I went to a West St. John game a few weeks ago and saw Ira Jackson. Some of you might remember Ira Jackson, who's a quarterback a couple, many, many years ago. And he was there with his little boy, about five, six years old. And he said, you know all those stories in, my, in Dad's scrapbook? She wrote them. That's what I do. And so, now here are your finalists for the River Parishes Coach of the Year. I love you all. Y'all are wonderful. And here are the finalists for the Coach of the Year. The RiverParishFootball.com finalist for Coach of the Year, East St. John's Philip Banco, who spent his second year at East St. John trying to keep his team together following the aftermath of Hurricane Isaac that flooded his school, field house, and displaced many of his players. With donated equipment, the Wildcats practiced where they could find and finished an extremely challenging season with a five and five record that included a playoff appearance. Tim Dettelier, Lutcher, plenty of rebuilding to do with the Bulldogs and Dettelier cringed when looking at the first few games on the schedule. But not only did the Bulldogs survive the early portion of the season unscathed, they closed out the year with just the fourth undefeated, untied regular season in Lutcher history. St. Charles Catholic's Frank Monica, coming off a 15-0 season in which he won his 200th career game, Monica led his team to the 3A quarterfinals. Despite having to replace a majority of his offensive skilled position players from a year ago, losing the first two games of this season and dealing himself with the aftermath of Hurricane Isaac, which flooded his own home as well as those of many of his players. Monica led the Comets to eight consecutive wins after the two losses to open the year and finished with an eight and three overall record, the second best in the River Parishes. Riverside's Bill Stubbs. After an 0-4 start to the season, Stubbs may have wondered if he made the right decision by returning to coaching after over a decade away from the game. But the Rebels would rebound, winning six of their next seven games, including a pair of playoff wins, and did so with a roster loaded with underclassmen. West St. John's Robert Valdez. He led the Rams to the most wins and the deepest playoff run of any River Parish team. As usual, West St. John loaded up the non-conference portion of its schedule with 5A and 4A opponents. Following the brutal run, the Rams reeled off eight straight wins and tied with Lutcher for the most wins by a River Parish team. Hanville's Lou Valden, he too led his team to a major turnaround after the Tigers' 0-4 start to the season. Not only did Hanville rip off six straight wins to capture the outright District 8 5A title, but they also pulled off a comeback upset playoff win on the road over 10th seed St. Paul's. Drum roll, please. Your RiverParishFootball.com Coach of the Year, one of my favorites, Coach Robert Valdez. <laughs> Playoff time in football all over Louisiana, 
and Brox Automotive has got the spirit. Stop by our shop in reserve for these playoff specials. An oil change with a nine-point inspection for $29.95. Rotate and balance most tires for $24.95. Radiator and heater flush, plus coolant for $49.95. Brox Automotive with 24-hour towing service. From one generation to the next. Congratulations to all our winners so far. And uh, before we hand out our final award, uh, we'd like to recognize uh, one group here tonight. And uh, again, this is a learning experience. The first time we've done it, um, when George and Lori and myself got together with not only the list, can, can you imagine making the finalist list of each one of these categories? You're gonna leave people off that, you know, debatable should be on. And then to narrow from six to one, that was even more difficult. So when we finally came up with our, with our winners and, uh, you know, we wanted to recognize our players of the week, you know, I, I called each coach myself and, um, invited them, I wanted them to be there, but I wanted them to bring the winners. Uh, whether you want a Fatty's Player of the Week, whether you are gonna win one of the Players of the Year, I wanted each player to come here tonight uh, to leave with a, a, a trophy, a plaque, something. And so we're like, you know, well, how are we gonna do it? And you know, we're starting to think more and more. Well, you know, that's about, you know, a table per team. You know, we've got, you know, we've got West St. John, we've got our Hanville, and boom, boom. And the more we got closer to the event, something was missing. All right, there's eight teams in River Parish football, okay? One team was missing. So I got on the phone, we made a call, we've been talking about it, and um, although nobody is gonna come out with the trophy today, I want everyone here to recognize right now assistant coach Shane Kleber, Seth Keller, his family from St. James, we appreciate your no quit attitude and what you guys have done the last two years. You've made River Parish football proud and we're proud to have you here tonight. Please stand and be recognized. Our final award tonight is gonna to be a very special award and it's gonna be again, one that's gonna be very um, important to this banquet for as long as we do riverparishfootball.com postseason awards banquet. Uh, we want this award to be a part of it. And to set it up, uh, we're gonna show you a part of a story that we did for CST last year, uh, uh, just to give you a little setup for uh, who this young man is. So if we can, let's go ahead and show that. For the past five years, since his older brother introduced him to St. Charles football, this is how Nick Forsyth helps prepare for game week. His actual title, we'll let him explain. Technically, on paper, I'm a manager, but I kind of work as a, both a manager and an athletic trainer. So if somebody needs to be taped up, I can tape them up, or, uh, or if I need to fill up water bottles, I do that too. So as the Comets prepared for an undefeated and highly ranked Class 3A playoff opponent, this student manager and aspiring athletic trainer knows all about facing challenges on a greater scale. I was diagnosed with juvenile dermatomyositis, which is an autoimmune disease, and I was diagnosed at age three. I fought this disease uh, for years, and it finally went into remission about fourth or fifth grade. And since then, I've just been trying to work on getting my range of motion back. I've gone through three surgeries attempting to get some range of motion in my arms back. Late in the regular season, St. Charles head coach Frank Monica told Nick that he planned to dress him out for senior night. It took me a while to get, I get it through my head that this was actually gonna happen, that it wasn't just some promise somebody was make that they weren't gonna be able to carry through with. But this was no broken promise. Like every other senior on the Comets team, Nick was recognized before the final regular season game to meet his parents at midfield. I got there, I could see my mom was already tearing up a little bit. Uh, my dad had a big grin on his face. I was just trying to hold it together because I mean, I'm on a 50 yard line in front of all these people. I didn't want to uh, like break down. The pregame march may not have broke any speed limits, but the image of Nick leading the Comets into battle set the tone against an E.D. White team who on a night like this never had a chance. He said, Nick, we're going to put you in for a play. And I looked at him and the first words out of my mouth were, what did I do to you? What he did was put Nick in for one play, an otherwise uneventful short running play that no one at Thomas Dupuy Stadium that night will ever forget. So with back-to-back -back playoff wins, St. Charles will be working hard for the Thanksgiving holiday. 
preparing for the quarterfinals. And Nick, well, he's back to his old job with a lifelong memory already tucked away. So there you see it, it'll be the Nick Forsyth Courage Award, and we'll give that out each and every year to a deserving candidate. And uh, we're very pleased and honored again to have Nick himself to join us here to present the first award. So please give it up for a freshman now at Nichols, Nick Forsyth. Nick, first of all, let's ask, how are things going at Nichols? And I know you wanted to be an athletic trainer. Uh, how's it going, man? How's college? Uh, currently, I'm enrolled at Nichols uh, in Thibodeau, where I just completed my first semester Monday. Um, so currently, I'm still on track to complete my degree in the required four years, and I hope to be able to be an athletic trainer one day. Well, we certainly wish you the best. We thank, thank you for being here. And again, you know, just that one game that he got in the tail end of last year was, and I've known Nick for the last couple years, every time he went to a St. Charles game, there were two things with this guy. He was working hard and he was smiling. He was very upbeat. So let's go ahead and look at the monitor and find out who the very first recipient of the Nick Forsyth Courage Award will be. Before Des Broussard even began his senior season at East St. John, he and his teammates were dealt a blow no high school team should ever have to deal with. The flood waters from Hurricane Isaac filled their school and their field house. It was a quick realization that this would be no ordinary season. Barely a week later, Broussard and the Wildcats were ready to resume some type of normalcy. District rival Destrahan opened its facilities and the Saints, among others, offered equipment. Oh, that mean a lot because me and my family and my team, we lost everything. And um, by them donating stuff, that's a big help to our community And because football in our community is a big thing. On the field, Broussard picked up right where he left off during his breakout junior season. One of the most electrifying returners in the River Parishes, Broussard also quickly vaulted to the top of the River Parish leaderboard in receiving. Through week six, Broussard was number one in both receptions with 23 and receiving yards with 485. But on a practice preparing for Hanville, the unthinkable, Broussard broke his right ankle in three places. His senior season was over, or was it? Less than two days after surgery, where screws were inserted in his ankle, Broussard, in a wheelchair, surprised his team at the Hanville game for the Wildcat Walk. It was a sign of things to come. It was just brotherhood that they showed me. It's all love, and they wish I was on the field with them fighting war. Broussard led the charge of support for East St. John football the rest of the way and even helped out coaching the young receivers that were taking his place on the field. No one would have blamed Bruce Hart for giving up this season, but the Wildcats senior did just the opposite. Doing his team, his school, and all of River Parish football proud. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our very first recipient of the Nick Forsyth Courage Award, Des Bruce Hart. Des, I want you to come up here and say a word as well. Nick, thank you very much. You're going to be a part of this as long as we're doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Des, congratulations. Tell us physically how you're doing, and I know college football is still in your future. Um, hey, how you doing, everybody? Um, <laughs> thankful. Um, well, as the doctor said, I'm seven to eight weeks ahead of my recovery, and most likely eight out of ten chance I will be playing college football on the next level. Thank you. Thank you, Des, and thank you. That'll bring an end to our banquet. And again, uh, thank you guys all for being a part of this. 
learning experience. It went a little bit longer than I anticipated. Uh, a lot of people to thank, and obviously we've done a, a, a job of that with our staff and our sponsors up here. Some other sponsors that couldn't be with us tonight, uh, Buckwalter Insurance Group, uh, Tatchy Insurance Group in Laplace, uh, as well as Cajun Comfort and Laplace Glass. Again, those sponsors, uh, we, we recognize them, but we also want you to patronize them as well because without them, we can't have 12 guys going out on a Friday night covering as many games as, uh, as we did. So uh, on behalf of everyone here at RiverParishFootball.com, I'm Eric Ritchie. Thank you guys for being here. Good night, and let's do it again next year.